This is the story of an oak tree that's hanging on to life. I found this scene during the second lockdown in November 2020 on my usual confinement walk. But this time I was exploring the riverbed, hoping to find interesting patterns, maybe autumn colors, mud ripples or stuff like that. Uh, what's particular about this river is that it gets submerged by the sea when the tide rises. So there's a lot of algas and freshwater plants. On my way I passed another subject I photographed before. What interested me was the cavity and the wall with the very nice ochre and green tones and the embedded round rocks. Hello, 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 meet the oak tree, the star of this show. I knew I wanted to come back and check it out under low light at the end of the afternoon, but I could only do that and access the subject on a low tide. When I arrived and all the conditions perfectly lined up, I started to look for a composition using my Mumia C33 medium format camera. I'm using my 55mm lens because I want to be able to feature a large part of the wall to show how it's shrinking and how the tree is really precariously balancing on the very very edge. In the background unfortunately there's a shipwreck, which is kinda cool, and some bright buildings that are very squarish that I did not want to include in the composition because I wanted the whole image to have more of a natural feeling to it. This subject tells a compelling story of surviving beautifully in the face of adversity. And to me it's important to go and photograph it because I know it won't last forever. The tree may fall during the next storm and the river eats away the ground every single day. For this subject I wanted to have fine grain and a wide dynamic range because I knew I wanted to shoot it in direct sunlight. So I used for the first time Cinestill 50 Delight film. May I say it was daylighted? <laughs> no, 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 please don't click away, that's not what you think. So I liked the almost pastel look of this film. I think the resulting image was quite influenced by the film stock. I usually shoot Portrait 160. And other details I found interesting in this subject are the seaweeds that I are attached to the low hanging branches, the vivid green moss and the shape of the stem of the tree that reminds me somehow of some kind of theater mask. I lined up the buildings that were in the background distracting to better differentiate the root system from the background and the shipwreck I just hid it in some branches. There was a big tree stump, I was debating whether to include it or not in the composition and at the end I decided to leave it because I feel it could represent the future of this subject. I definitely think this image could still be improved, in especially I don't quite like the top left corner which feels kinda empty and kinda weird, but I want to go back in spring, hopefully it will still be standing and try another composition. So I would love to hear your thoughts on this composition, how you would have shot it differently, maybe in black and white or different aspect ratio. On my way back I passed a fallen tree stump with dramatic chainsaw cuts. I liked the patterns on the wood and the bark. I found it was revealed very nicely by the warm side light from the setting sun. I set up a close shot using my normal lens which is an 80mm. Yes, it's a blue dot. <laughs> When using a TLR for close-ups, you want to be really careful about the parallax difference between the what you see on the viewfinder and what will end up on your film. On the Mimiya C-series, it's represented by a needle and you can use another accessory, which is a paramander, to compensate very precisely.
can see me measuring using a grey card. If I remember correctly, I think I compensated for the bellows extension about once and a half stop, setting the exposure at f16 at a 30th of a second. In the next few weeks, I would like to do a better job at documenting the settings I'm using in the field. So I'm looking at other photographers' methods, and I found the analog book that I might try, and also the Ansel Adams notation systems, but that feels very useful for large format camera and not so much medium format. So that's something I would be super interested to discuss in the comments. How do you take notes in the field? I like the textures in this photo, and the story behind it is about contrast. Natural, organic drawings, the bark, tree rings, contrasting with harsh, geometrical, man-made shapes and cuts. Thank you so much for taking your time to see this video journal. If you would like to see more of my work, including photographs, drawings and engravings, you are kindly invited to my website <laughs> at www.clarajolie.art. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me. I'm wishing you a great day and nice photographic adventures.